Like and subscribe right now, or you're going to have terrible luck for the next week. At the start of the 20th century horses were already fading and replaced with combustion motors. Many of us would call our critical engagements to be spectators at auto racing games, because we love the fearless drivers, cars, the sounds they make, and the fierceness that comes with the competition. However, there are some dark days everyone hoped not to witness. In this video we look at the 15 unluckiest moments in races. Number 15. The 2001 Daytona 500. If you are a race fan, you've probably heard of this story, but it's one of those incidents you didn't take too seriously. The February 18, 2001, event was a dark day. On the final lap of the Daytona 500 just heading into turn 4, Sterling Martin's bumper bumped into Dale Earnhardt's car. Dale veered off the track and swung back to the racing surface. The vehicle was again hit by Ken Schrader's car, which pushed Dale's CAR into the wall. Investigations revealed that the force was equated to a height of 20 meters. But the victim suffered a fatal fracture to the skull. Before moving to the next number, we just want a small favor from you. Like this video and subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon and get one week good luck for you. Try this, it really works. Number 14. The 1999 Marlboro 500. The final race of the 1999 Kart World Series was held at the Auto Club Speedway. 24-year-old Canadian driver Greg Moore was optimistic he'd be victorious in the race. He was involved in an accident the previous week because a vehicle knocked him off his motor scooter, but he didn't want to miss the game. With an injured right hand, Moore was allowed to participate in the race. On lap 9 he lost control of his car and spun into the infield grass at 200 miles per hour. The top of the vehicle struck a concrete barrier directly and he suffered head and internal injuries. Although he was rushed to hospital, he died soon after. Number 13. The 1964 Indianapolis 500. If there is a crash during a race, the standard is that a yellow flag comes out and drivers drive under caution until the situation is under control. During the 1964 Indy 500, Dave McDonnell had a speedy and unstable car. Other drivers said that he was taking an uncalculated risk because his car would go out of control at times. On the second lap of the game, his car spun, struck the wall, and burst into flames. Eddie Sucks, another driver tried to dodge the chaos and get through, but he hit McDonald's car, thereby causing another explosion. He died instantly and McDonald suffered significant burns to his body. It was the first time the Indianapolis 500 was halted due to an accident. Number 12. The 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. The 1994 San Marino Grand Prix was the third race of the season. Everton, center, held pole position as he had done for two previous races. Two severe crashes dampened the festivities in the qualifying stages. Rubens Barrichello was severely hurt when his car crashed into the tire barrier. Roland Ratzenberger died from injuries to his skull after he lost control at 190 miles per hour. On race day, Cena's car struck the wall on lap 7 at 135 miles per hour and fatally injured him. Investigations say the front wheel separated and hit his head, causing him drama. This accident led to the enforcement of new safety rules in Formula One. Number 11. The 1964 Riverside International Raceway. Joe Weatherly was also known as the clown prince of racing due to his outgoing personality. He was a joker and stayed up to the early hours of the morning partying with friends even when he had a competition. He was a NASCAR champ and won the 1962 and 1963 Grand National Series plus 25 career races. In January 1964 he participated in the fifth race of the season in California. During the event he lost and hit the wall. His head went outside the window and was crushed against the wall. He didn't wear a harness. Neither was a window screen installed. After the accident, the authorities made the installation of window nets mandatory in all NASCAR vehicles. Number 10. The 1903 Paris to Madrid race. The 1903 Paris to Madrid race was one of the earliest and most dangerous motorsports in history. 
Although the first recognized race occurred 10 years earlier, it demonstrated that more expertise in practice was needed. The competition was over 1,300 kilometers long and involved about 300 racers who used motorcycles and cars. No repairs were allowed between stages, which explains why half of the vehicles crashed during the race. The inexperienced racers' officials and the crowd were not surprised at how things turned out. Cars fell apart, drivers struck railway crossing signs and specters right in front of cars causing numerous injuries. By the end of the event more than eight people lost their lives. Number 9. The 1955-24 Hours of Le Mans. The event has to be the single deadliest race that killed most spectators. The races at Le Mans are exceptional and regarded as one of the most legendary in the world of motorsport. After the 1955 disaster authorities reeled out new safety regulations. There was a sudden break by a Jaguar near a pit and many cars tried to avoid a collision. Unfortunately, Pierre Levé's Mercedes could not evade the chaos. Instead, it hit another car and launched into the crowd. The engine and hood flew into the crowd, crushing and decapitating unlucky spectators. The car went up in flames and burnt more people. About 84 lives were lost and 100 people injured in the tragic incident. Number 8. The 1998 JGTC at Fuji. The JGTC used many of Japan's famous racetracks and gathered amazing supercars like Nissan, Porsche, Ferrari, and Toyota. In 1988, the Fuji Speedway's weather conditions were terrible as there was thick fog and heavy rain. The safety car was speeding before it came to an abrupt stop. It caused two Porsches to collide, and while one was on the ground a Ferrari came out of the fog and struck it. Both cars burst into flames and the Ferrari driver was trapped in the burning vehicle for more than a minute before the fire was extinguished. He required surgery for the burns, after which he retired from the sport. Number 7. The 1978 Italian Grand Prix. During the 1978 Italian Grand Prix, there was a mix-up with a starting signal. This mistake caused the game to start before the drivers were in position. Because of the search from the vehicles behind it resulted in a significant crash. The nine pileup was preventable and shouldn't have led to death, but the organizers got more than they bargained for. Ronnie Peterson was stuck in his burning vehicle, but he was lucky to be pulled out by his fellow drivers. It didn't stop him from sustaining minor injuries and burns. Due to poor communication, he had to wait for 20 minutes before an ambulance arrived. He died the next day due to complications from the injuries. Number 6. The 1982 Belgian Grand Prix. This pick features another optimistic Canadian racer. Giles Velenov had a fatal crash while qualifying for the 1982 Belgian Grand Prix at Zolder. With only a few minutes to the end of the session, Giles Ferrari came to a bend where there was a slower car in his path. Unable to slow quickly, he tried to go around but was cut off by a slower car. His Ferrari launched into the air at about 130 miles per hour and disintegrated in the process. Guile, who was strapped in his seat, was thrown 50 meters from the car and hit a fence at the track's edge. He suffered a broken neck and was taken to a nearby hospital where he died. Number 5. The 1957 Milmelia. The Mill Melia was a yearly endurance race similar to what we know as rally races today. The slowest vehicles started first, and the faster ones followed later, so that the roadways would not be closed for long. Something spectacular happened in 1957. The combination of spectators and speed made the authorities ban this race. There were two fatal crashes in one day involving drivers and spectators. The most serious one involved Edmund Nelson and Alfonso de Protego. The Ferrari they were in was traveling at 120 miles per hour when a tire burst and it caused the car to leave the road rollover and tear the drivers into two. That wasn't all. The vehicle struck a crowd and killed nine people. Number 4. Old Bridge Township Raceway Park 2008. Scott Kalita was one of the most successful racers I in American racing history. He won 18 races and claimed two championships in 1994 and 1995. In 2008, 
he entered the final round of qualifying for the Lucas Oil Super Nationals in Old Bridge Township. Near the end, the engine exploded and damaged the parachute that should have slowed the car down. The dragster continued through the sand trap and over the wall at 125 miles per hour before striking a crane. He died from the crash's impact and the NHRA had to shorten the length of the tracks to 1,000 feet, padding the retaining walls and lengthening the sand traps. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take me 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal you just leave a like on this video smash that subscribes button and hit the notification bell and you'll get 15 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 3. The 1976 German Grand Prix. The 1976 Formula Season 1 was popular because it was one of the most humanly contested campaigns in sports history. The 2013 movie Rush made every motorsports lover know about the rivalry between James Hunt and Austria Nick Luda. The German Grand Prix was held at the Nürburgring track with a dangerous reputation. The situation was worse because of the wet conditions. On lap 2 Loudon lost control and hit the wall, causing his car to burst into flames. The fire increased when another race car ran into the flaming car. Lotta was stuck there until other drivers rescued him, but he suffered severe burns to his face. Number 2. The 1986 Tour de Course. The World Rally Championship pushed the limits of speed and power on non-race services during the 1980s. The cars of this era belonged to Group B and had powerful turbocharged engines. Some of the vehicles could go from 0 to 60 in 30 seconds on gravel. It was only a matter of time before power became too much for the narrow courses. During the 1986 Tour de Course, Sergio Cresto and his co-driver Henry Toivonen crashed a Lancia Lancia Delta S4. The car veered off the road down to a ravine and landed on the roof before bursting into flames. Both men died in the incident and the cars burned beyond recognition. Toivonen had complained earlier that his car was too powerful. The accident proved the point. Number 1. The 1977 South African Grand Prix. During lap 22 of the 1977 South African Grand Prix race Renzo's car pulled off to one side of the track and went up into flames. Two fire marshals were swift to appear to put out the fire with extinguishers, but two more cars appeared on the tracks almost immediately. The first marshal was lucky to run across, but the second one was hit by Tom Price's car. He flew into the wall and the extinguisher he was carrying smashed into Price's head, killing him instantly. His vehicle continued on the track until it crashed at the next turn. There you have it. Tell us about your most horrific experience watching your favorite drivers. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel to stay updated with the latest content.